Hi everybody, I'm Vanita and this is my daughter Anaya. And today we are making fire cider. As you see, my mom has been making lots of fire cider. <laughs> In a discussion of the um, root chakra where we deal with safety and stability, fire cider came up because fire cider is a uh, important witchy potion. It's an earth medicine. A food is medicine to really stimulate our digestive power and our immune system. And when we have a strong digestive power, when we have a healthy gut, when we have a strong immune system, we are in our full power. We have our complete health. It is the foundation of our health. And it is so interesting that so much of that foundation of our health is actually based on the roots. It's based on a lot of these, um, these medicines, these food um, that are grown deep in the earth, like ginger and turmeric and horseradish root. We keep it brewing regularly. Uh, it takes about a month to brew, so you've got to think about this in advance. Make this at home, and it is so simple. And so we're going to show you how to do it. Just watch this video. <laughs> and so um, with fire cider, the important thing to remember is there's no one way to make it. There are some basic components, and those basic components include horseradish, ginger, turmeric, and jalapeno. And then the rest of it really, and apple cider vinegar, of course. And then um, the rest of it is really up to you. So I'm gonna do one of my favorites that includes beetroot. Um, as you can see, I brew a lot of fire cider with beetroot. And um, I also reuse all kind of glass bottles that um, we get, you know, whether it's from apple cider vinegar itself or marinara sauce or whatever it is, um, I keep all those glass bottles because it's really important that we reduce waste. Recycling isn't as good as we think it is. And, you know, we can use it around the house in multiple ways. So we're going to make a fire cider that has been really um, one of my favorites. It includes beets, as I mentioned, and it also includes lots of spices. So the spices that I'm using, you can use whatever spices you'd like, you know, let, let yourself feel into it. There's so many healing properties with spices and they're often underused in this country. Growing up Indian, it's something that we have a lot of. Um, my daughter is gonna grind it. And in this one, that what I have is um, some chili peppers that I dried myself. I like to keep things drying. I don't know if you can see this, but um, I'll take a lot of the things that we grow in the garden and dry them out to make my own herbs and even sometimes just dry spices like pepper. There's also green cardamom. There's black pepper and pink pepper in there. Uh, pepper trees are common in Southern California. And sometimes like if I see them ripe, I will take a few of the peppercorns. Um, yeah, so go ahead and grind that. There's also anise seed in there. I think I mentioned the green cardamom and there was a piece of cinnamon bark that is now ground. That's good, I think. So all we're trying to do is just break up these pieces so that they are um, able to release their fragrance. They're able to release the chemical properties that you know we are interested in. A lot of these are uh, good for you know reducing inflammation. Um, they can be anti-cancer. There's so much. So. Remember that you're going to be using very clean jars. Make sure they're washed because these, you know, we don't want to add anything else into them. Like germs. <laughs> right? We're going to use the fire cider to fight germs, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I'm just adding some of this spice mixture into the bottom. And I put, the, I put it into the bottom because I want to make sure that um, that there is, that they're going to be weighted down. I'm actually going to use this mason jar so that you can see it. Um, and so I'm just going to put all the spices in there. All right. And now we're going to put some horseradish root. Okay. This is an extremely, um, medicinal root. You know, we use it, I don't think as often, um, as we could in our food, but it's wonderful in fire cider. And after you've strained your fire cider, actually, you can um, keep uh, the, the vegetable. It's almost like a pickled vegetable. Put it in, you know, whatever you're eating on top of your sandwiches and your burgers, um, you know, anything that you want, you can think of that, um, you know, a pickled vegetable would be nice on. So you can see that I've added quite a bit of horseradish root. Um, I consider it one of the main components um, 
of fire cider. We're also going to add some ginger. I just chopped up the ginger. For the horseradish, I used a food processor. Um, food um, Ginger can, you know, it's very fibrous and it can hurt a food processor or it can just be difficult to clean. So I just chopped that up. And so we can put some ginger in. All right. So the next one, I'm not going to have you touch it because it's turmeric and it's going to turn your hands all yellow. Um, but turmeric is, you know, a wonderful root um, that is uh, important. Ginger is great for anti-inflammation. Turmeric is antiviral, antifungal, um, anti-cancer. -can um, that's true too. Um, antibacterial. I mean, it's got so many properties. In India, they they call turmeric holdi, and they say holdi for health. Um, it's so powerful. I got the active ingredient in turmeric curcumin tattooed on me. I also have the active ingredient for chili pepper capsaicin. Um, and they are extremely important uh, chemicals and foods. And, you know, I think that a lot of the industries have isolated the curcumin and the capsaicin to look at their anti-cancer, antiviral, antifungal properties, but it's better as a whole food. So I'm gonna put some turmeric in. Yellow. Yeah, they're gonna get yellow and then they're gonna get orange. Yeah, from and then, yeah. And then you and then this is beet and you also could use beet for the health and for and if you want your your fire cider to be purple, you could also use beet, but mostly for the health. Yeah, she's right. And during coronavirus we really want to be healthy, so if you could use the Yeah, she's absolutely right. All of these things are really important um, for the virus, and beets are really good for our circulation. They're really important for our blood count. And so um, it's really great for women during their moon cycles, but you know, it's great overall for our health. Um, and the most important thing I think is, you know, the spiciness. You wanna have, as I was mentioning, the capsaicin. I use dried chili peppers that I dried. Um, you can just add cayenne powder if you want. There's also jalapeno that I'm adding. I love to use cilantro, um, sorry, serrano. I didn't know there was green chili pepper. Yeah. Yeah, these are jalapeno. Um, something that's often in fire cider is garlic, and garlic bulb is really uh, another wonderful, you know, piece of food medicine. It's there are so many good properties to garlic, just like turmeric and ginger, um, and it's common to use. And go ahead and use it. Um, one thing that I've learned studying Ayurveda long ago that I really don't fully understand, but you know, one of the most amazing and potent aspects of garlic is it brings you in your body, which is so important for healing and health. But because it brings you into your body so much, if you are somebody who practices something like bilocation, astral projection, lucid dreaming, garlic may not be the best thing to add to what you're eating um, or drinking partially because it does keep you so grounded. So just something to keep in mind. I love to eat garlic. I'll eat it in my food, but I leave it out of something like fire cider because it is loaded with so many other things that, you know, I do like to practice things like astral travel and bilocating and lucid dreaming. So I'm leaving the garlic out. Now, my daughter um, is picking apart some rosemary for us. You can put the whole sprig in just like that. Um, this is rosemary that we grew in our garden. And, and, so then we just, mint. and then there's mint, you know, add whatever you feel like that you want to add. I'm also adding in some lemon and I use whole lemon. These are all washed vegetables. And then I use the rind. There are many important chemicals and um, vitamins and nutrients and um, minerals and all these things in the rinds and the skins of our vegetables as there are in the actual fruit pulp. Um, the last thing that I'm going to add is a magic trick. And this is something that um, I call it a magic trick because you require so tiny amounts of it and it changes the taste of everything. Um, this is a powder called a sifatita. It's called hing um, in Hindi and you would buy it at an Indian grocery. Um, this is an extremely important spice and has been shown to really combat flus of all kinds. Um, it was known for the swine flu and the Spanish flu and all these other things. You know, we're dealing with 
a virus that has these flu-like symptoms, it's on the minds of everybody. So I've been adding it to my fire cider. Um, hang is a really, really pungent spice. And um, if you've ever had Indian food where you're like, wow, what is that flavor? Where, how do they develop it? It's most likely hang that has been used. Um, it, it just transforms the, the taste of things. And when you smell it, it's not exactly the most pleasant smell, but it does wonders um, to food. And it's been doing wonders to my fire cider. I actually have it in the last batch of one that I made with beetroot and it's amazing. Now, some people add honey to their fire cider and you can totally add honey if, um, you know, and it, it'll mellow out that taste, but I actually find the beets to be sweet enough. There's no need for added sugar. When I make fire ciders that don't, like this one here is made with onion and garlic. Um, I don't add honey because I like to use this one to cook with as well and to make salad dressings and do different things like that. So I tend to not be on the sweeter side for a lot of my foods, but you're welcome to add some honey if you feel like. I just don't recommend using it for cooking because when you cook honey, uh, it changes the properties of it that um, actually reduce all the benefits that, or actually take away all the benefits that we would get from it. Did you want to say something? Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a lemon tree, come to ours because whenever someone walks by and wants a lemon, they usually just knock on our door and ask him. A lot of people have been doing that lately because I think they think they want lemons during this place and probably keep the stores have run out of it. So. Yeah, you're welcome to come to our place. Thank you for being so kind. So I am now adding apple cider vinegar to this. I don't know if you can see. Um, you're gonna fill it all the way to the top. You don't want anything exposed and it should just go all the way to the top of the jar. And this is really beautiful to watch the beets turn this into a beautiful purple color as she was saying. And now if you're using a mason jar, anything that has a metal lid, where's the other lid, this one? Oh, there. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, so if you're using like a mason jar or anything with a metal lid, you want to be sure to put a piece of parchment paper or wax paper on this so that um, it doesn't, the apple cider vinegar does not corrode the metal. Here's an example. Thank you for getting that. This has parchment paper because it's glass and metal lid and as she was saying, I think it's bad for it. So parchment paper is good for this. That's right. Thank you so much, Anaya. And voila, you have your batch of fire cider ready to go. So now um, what you're going to do is you're going to just store this in a cold, dark place. I use just a cabinet, like one of these cabinets behind me. I just keep it in there. And then every so often you want to go in and shake this up so that you get everything moving around. Now, like I said, you can keep this vegetable. You can keep some of this to um, use in your food, to use in your stir fries, to do all sorts of good things with. So, you know, don't, don't just automatically throw this stuff away. All of this still carries some goodness in it. Um, and then when it's been a month, you know, you can label your jars. I like to label them with all the batches I'm doing. Of course, I did not label this one, but that's because it's the same as this. But, um, strain it out, press the vegetable the best that you can because you'll get more out of there and, you know, store it in a jar. All of this is good at room temperature. You can keep it there for up to six months or maybe even longer. There's nothing that's going to go wrong with it. So have two tablespoons a day. Do, you know, make salad dressings with it, cook with it, put it in your soup. So many good things, and it's going to improve your digestive fire. It's going to improve your gut health. It's going to improve your immunity, and it's just wonderful earth medicine. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you, Anaya, for joining me. And thank you for this flower. All right. Bye. Bye.